Hey guys, Brian here with you today from Bob Botanicals on a very special video. We're going to do a little episode of Pimp My Incubator. It's going to be great. You'll love it. Uh, we've got an old incubator. We're going to rehab it. We're going to trick it out and it's going to be awesome. Uh, so let's look at what we're starting with here. It's pretty rough. All right, on this awesome uh, workbench that my father-in-law made for me, uh, we've got our, our old Hovabator. Old school. This stuff, um, I don't know how old this is. This is definitely not their current design. Uh, it's seen some, I don't even know what that is. Something got a hold of it. I have no idea. Um, but it's in really bad shape. It's it's the st it's still in one piece, but it's, it's seen better days. Um, we used it a couple years ago to hatch some chicks out. It worked okay. Uh, the success rate was not what I'd like. Um, <clears throat> we had a lot of problems with this thermostat not really... Um, being as precise as it should be. These, uh, these is actually called a, a wafer thermostat, and it's really neat the way it works. It's a mechanical unit, very, very simple, lasts forever. Um, these are two, there's two wafers here. Each one is, is filled with a gas. There's like a little pocket of gas that's sandwiched between these two, um, each one of these wafers. And that, that gas is actually very sensitive to temperature changes. So it warms up a little bit, it expands a lot. And if it cools off a little bit, it contracts a lot. And so what that gives you is a very, very uh, tight tolerance of temperature. Uh, as this thing expands and contracts, it works kind of like an accordion, and it actuates, um, it actuates a switch. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Uh, the switch, of course, when it's, when it's closed, will turn this on, and when it's open, uh, it will... Uh, not turn on. This is the heating element. I believe it's a 20 watt heating element. I'm not sure if this is a transformer or not. I don't think it is. It doesn't look big enough to be one. So I'm assuming this, this whole thing is 120 volt. I haven't really tested it yet. That's one thing we're going to do along the way is I'm going to pull this out and test to see what it's running at. But just based on the, the gauge of wire and stuff, I'm, I'm guessing this is 120 volt. <clears throat> I guess I could, you know, look up the specs and stuff, but that would be too easy. So... On the other side here, this is the bottom part. I've got some CPU fans we'll be using later. <clears throat> this is the bottom. We've got an egg turner in here, a mechanical egg turner. This works pretty well. Um, it does the job. It's really loud. This motor grinds and, and groans a lot, but it seems to be, you know, working pretty well. And then under here, it looks like there's probably some missing, I don't know what was there, something round and hopeful. Uh, missing some stuff. Uh, that's probably just a... I don't know, we'll get the sponge or something goes down under there. We'll make do with that. Um, so when we're done with this thing, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a, a uh, we're going to take this out. <clears throat> we're going to have a, a digital thermostat with a very tight tolerance, one degree tolerance, which is pretty good. Uh, we're, and we're going to have a humidity meter. We're going to have uh, powered forced air circulation through here. So it's going to be a much more stable environment. Um, as it is now, this is what they call a static uh, heat incubator um, there's no air circulation <clears throat> and you can actually get as much as a five degree difference between the top where the heating element is and the bottom uh, so we don't want that we want the whole thing to be consistent we want it to be a consistent humidity and uh, all that stuff works out and it raises our hatch rate so we're in better shape there uh, all this stuff is going to come out we're going to probably splice this heating element directly into um, the cord here assuming this is all 120 um, take this out to make room and we'll put some fans in there and we'll wire in our um, our digital controller and it'll be great so let's get started all right guys so we made a little bit of progress here we've got the thermostat mechanism completely removed clears up a lot of space in here to work and, and put our stuff in here like a project area uh, interestingly enough this is the uh, the thermostat switch by default it's closed so by default it's it's on right and then when the thermostat expands and hits this button if you can hear that or not uh, then it's then it opens and turns off so by default the switch is on kind of an interesting thing i don't know if you wanted to use that for any other projects or whatever um, i could probably think of a couple cool uses that would break fire code uh, anyway uh, another one i just wanted to show you the, um, the thermostat itself the mechanism this is the uh, the wafer thermostat you can see there's two distinct wafers there and when it gets hot uh, this thing acts like an accordion and opens up it spreads out uh, when it gets cold um, it contracts and that's what actuates the switch so um, the way this, you set this is there's a little uh, a screw on top and you kind of move it closer or further away from the switch and you change it what temperature the switch closes or opens rather all right so 
<clears throat> let's take a look here. This stuff here, this is this is straight from the wall, guys. Um, if you're not comfortable messing with uh, real hot wires, don't do this. But uh, this is about as simple a wiring job as you're going to ever see. It really, it's if you screw this up, you really shouldn't be tying your own shoes. So you got two two wires coming in from the wall. Doesn't matter which one you use. This this cord doesn't even have a polarized plug on it, so it doesn't matter. Um, then you've got these two here, the blue and white. Can't see my hand. The blue and white go to the switch on the switch, the uh, the light on the other side, right there, so that we know it's on. You don't have to hook these up because I'm going to know it's on regardless based on the other thermostat. But uh, I'm going to hook it up just because it's you know one more light and lights are cool. Uh, this is the heating element here. So I, I tested all this stuff out. It still works fine, straight off of the mains here. Um, I had to even wonder if this is asbestos. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be messing with that. I guess I'm going to die now. Mesothelioma. Yeah. Anyway, so this yeah, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me a bit being as, as old as this thing is. Uh, that, that's asbestos. Great. Uh, anyway, so I've uh, cut that and liberated a lot into the air, I'm sure. Uh, so. All we're going to do really is we're going to take these guys here on one on each side and it's all going to be fused together. We're all going to just like stick it in a wire nut, solder it and uh, call it done. Right. And then uh, that way, whenever the thing is plugged in, it's on. So what, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut the power and control that at the at the plug, not at the not in here. We're going to have our thermostat, uh, our, our uh, temperature sensor in here, but the switch will be outside. So stay tuned. There's a lot more fun to come. All right, guys. So let's take a look at where we're at now. Uh, we've uh, made a good bit of progress here on the electrical side. And like I said, this is the, the easiest wiring gig you're ever going to do. You can see from this view, you've got the mains that come in here. Those are the black ones, the black wires. Uh, these two wires here, my finger looks really big. Uh, these two, the white ones, these go to the heating element around here. Uh, and that's just a, it's just a, um, just a friction heating element. It's got a really, um, I pulled these apart and looked and there's a really thin wire that's coiled around and it just, it's a resistance, uh, I say friction because it's electrical friction, but it's resistance based uh, and it just gets hot. <clears throat> and so then we have the other, other side here, um, the blue and the white, those are our light. So when this thing is plugged in, we're generating heat and we've also got a pretty light on so we know that it's running. So that is the operational state while it's plugged in, it's running. Uh, we're going to start now to uh, pimp out some of the feature sets. We're going to start making it cool and um, do some neat stuff. So stay tuned. All right, so the first thing we're going to do after wiring all that stuff up is we're going to put the humidity meter in. Now, this is a really neat little gizmo. Uh, it tells me what the, uh, what the temperature and what the humidity are. So it's going to be a check. Uh, a, a redundancy to my thermostat so I can tell uh, if it's too hot, too cold, or whatever, and, and know right away there's a problem. But the really important thing is the humidity because there's two things you want to keep track of while you're hatching eggs. One is temperature, obviously, it has to be controlled very precisely. The other is humidity, and that is not quite such a precise requirement, but it does need to be like, I think it's 50 to 60 percent or something like that. So I, I took a, um, a corrugated plastic sign here, never mind my masculine cup. Um, it's like lawn care sign or some crap I tore out of the yard. Um, corrugated plastic, made a little uh, redneck kind of thing there. And this is going to go, um, I don't know if you can kind of imagine that. It's going to sit there like that. So basically cut a hole in there. You don't have to do this, but, uh, you know, if you're going to redneck it, you just, you know, go all the way. So these things, this is going to be like in one of these windows. Um, and it's, I've cut it to fit down in there and played with it a little bit to get the size right. And then we're going to put this thing under it. Oops, this thing under it, assuming it's not in pieces. And then on the bottom here, we're going to um, run a metal strap to hold it in. Something like this, except it's going to be prettier. Uh, it'll be, you know, bent more appropriately. Anyway, this stuff here, this metal strapping, which you can get in big rolls for really cheap. Um, that's just like stuff to hold up pipes and like everything. All right, so stand by and uh, we'll be right back. So just to give you a little preview, this is what we're going to do here. We've got this metal strapping. This guy here, our humidity meter, goes face down there to the little window. And then we're going to hold it in place with this metal strapping. Um, I really would have liked this to have been stainless, but uh, it's not. So we'll just make do. 
and hopefully won't rust out because it is a really high humidity environment. Um, and then we're going to take and uh, kind of fasten these to this styrofoam. Be careful with this, it's just styrofoam. But we're going to use uh, stainless steel machine screws and some nuts and washers. Uh, and we're just going to finger tighten it to hold it in there. All right, so we've got our humidity meter in here. So this is what we've done. We've got this strapping stuff here. Put it in with uh, these, um, what size screws are these? Number eight. Number eight inch and a half screws um, and uh, number eight nuts. And uh, washers, eighth inch washers. Um, <clears throat> This, this is really, really, it holds surprisingly well, better than I thought it would. So this is, uh, this is in good shape here. I can get you from, from the side. I do have a little concern over the uh, radiant heat coming off of this element uh, melting the case here. But I'm going to try to compensate for that with, um, with some air movement. See if we can't keep it cool. I'll put up some fan action there going. Um, and hopefully uh, the smell of burnt plastic won't permeate the house. But this is what it looks like. It looks kind of, you know... I've seen worse. It's not terrible. You, know, you put it in here like this. It's gonna, you know, you got uh, your humidity there and the temperature right there. It's real uh, nice little heads-up display. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, and that uh, that little um, cutout. That's just corrugated plastic off of this sign here. If you can see, just cut the end off of that sucker. And <laughs> I used the corner because I knew that at least uh, one side would be square. Um, yeah. So let's uh, let's keep working on it. All right, we're uh, getting close to wrapping this up, so I'm going to show you what we got doing so far. Um, this is, I, I kind of fussed around a little bit and, and figured out the best way to do this would be to use this um, this uh, strapping and just tie it into the existing um, nuts and bolts here. And I actually put that one in. Uh, that's one of mine, but uh, we tied it in here. It makes a nice uh, little open uh bridge across that area and that's a great place to put uh, put our fans so I'm really hoping these fans move enough air if they don't then this was like a huge waste of time but we'll probably put them somewhere you know kind of like that they'll all be running uh, 12 volts so we'll get a nice spread of air movement down here and uh, try to move it through I'll probably actually put them out further uh, just so we can <clears throat> get to get more uniform flow there so um, we'll go ahead and fasten up these things. Uh, we'll attach to uh, this new wire, which I ran through here. Uh, this is just a. Um, I don't know where it went to. This is just a uh, a old uh, 12 volt adapter I had for. Um, I had for like an old modem or something, and uh, the modem's in a drawer. But this thing has got uh, got some life on it. So 12 volt, it's like three amps or something. So it's not gonna. Uh, yeah, it's a three amp. Uh, yeah, there's no no way these little fans are going to pull three amps. So uh, yeah, we got plenty of juice, plenty of cable here, no problem. Uh, we'll run these fans and see uh, see how it does. Get these things going. All right, folks. Well, this is the finished product. This incubator has been successfully pimped. Uh, it's warming up right now. There's no water in it, but uh, you can see here the uh, temperature has gotten up to 79, 24 percent humidity in there. Uh, this thing is, is pretty solid. It's not going anywhere. Uh, we've got uh, our wires managed to here, a couple more washers and stuff we put in. Um, if you look inside here, there's uh, the air circulation is being handled by a, a PC case fan that's 12 volts. It's uh, currently running at 7.5 volts because 12 volts was just a little too much, um, a little too breezy for there. And I wanted just to have the air circulate, not uh, cause undue issues. Um, you can see here, this is a uh, Foscam C1 wide angle uh, wireless camera so that uh, I can put this in another room. And you can see here, uh, we have a live video shot of, uh, of this, uh, this camera. So pretty neat stuff. I can keep an eye on things remotely or on my phone or iPad or whatever. This is the, um, the uh, Inkbird controller I was mentioning. Uh, here you've got the temperature setting, 99. This is the current temperature, 84. There's a temperature probe that's sitting down here at basically what would be egg level, uh, and that's reading. And then this is going to, um, you know, we got two sockets here, heating and cooling. Heating obviously is the one we're using. Um, it's set to a one degree differential, so if it drops below uh, 99, it, it kicks back on. And that should give us very, very tight temperature control. You'll notice that I didn't use these fans over here. Um, 
the ones I had intended on using, and I even made this little like frame and everything for them, and I wired them all in there, and they actually ran pretty well. Um, but when they were running, they just kind of, you know, they kind of sat like that, and it sort of, sort of reminded me of little chicken guillotines. And so, um, I didn't want to have these blades just like spinning all kinds of crazy and have them have some chicken like take their eye out in it or something like that. So. Um, this fan in here is a little more recessed. It's higher up. It's less likely they're going to go bumping into it. Um, so let's uh, let's take a gander inside and see what we got going on. That's pretty much it. Uh, we cleaned all this stuff out, cleaned the thermostat out, and uh, now we're running with uh, this this temperature probe right here, which uh, when you when you have this closed, it sits about egg level, uh, which would be down here. This is a Turner. Um, the motor is really noisy, so I'm going to put it in our guest bedroom and have the camera on it and just kind of keep a track on it there. Uh, this is the, uh, it's a, I believe it's a four or five inch PC fan here uh, with our pimping blue lights and stuff. And that works. And this is how we affix the, um, the humidity meter here. You can see, basically we, up, dragon? basically we took in, Ouch, that's quite warm. Um, washer here, this thing bent this way. Back here's a little magnet. So this thing is really, it's not really going anywhere. It's pretty solid. I'm really impressed with how tight it runs in there. Uh, everything here is wired together, real clean looking. Um, I had to kind of wedge the fan in there so it's not exactly centered, but it's pretty close. And it has a nice gentle breeze as it washes over the element. So it keeps this keeps this from overheating, which it wouldn't overheat anyway, but it just keeps the temperature nice and uniform. Keeps this from melting. I'm not really worried about this melting at all now. Um, if I, I mean, I was going to put some shielding on it, but that's, that's overkill. So that is, uh, that is this episode of Pimp My, Pimp My Incubator. Um, so I don't know if, if you guys want to try something like that. I probably put enough money into this project just to buy a new one. But a lot of this stuff I uh, had laying around and I wasn't using, had from other projects. So it was a good way to get some things out of the toolbox and get them running. Uh, here obviously we had the lid open so it dropped back down uh, to 58. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, put some water in here, get the humidity and temperature up and put some eggs in. So that's it for us. You guys have a good one. Thanks.